thanks that you're here and our neighbors, uh, our homeowners association uh, meetings here. Uh, we are a full service, service agency and uh, typically every day we have seniors. So it's really important to all the seniors that come here and many are not residents of Converse, but they are impacted by everything that goes on in the city. I've lived here since 83, so I've got longevity and gray hair and wait to prove it. I raised $1.3 million to run this facility, and that's through government grants, foundations, corporate grants, business grants. I am very pro-business. I am pro-growth. I appreciate the addition of new residents because it brings in tax dollars. I expect that our mayor should be in the position to bring good light to our city so that we are able to bring the businesses in, to, for me to get the grants that I need, for me to have the support from the neighbors. So I look to our leaders up there to be the spotlight and the image that helps us all to be successful. And for the youth and the people that live here, that they feel safe, that they can drive down the street and get the service or whatever they want to buy without having to go into San Antonio or New Braunfels or the healthcare and all of those things that make the quality of life Good afternoon, I'm Donovan Rodriguez, I'm a Bear County resident, and I just wanted to, to clarify, uh, I'm a young professional, I have a young family, and we're outside of Converse, but looking forward to moving in Converse. Um, there was a comment made of Katrina people. Um, again, as being a young professional, I am of a lower income bracket, and not from Katrina or anything, but you know, a, a younger family. And I just want to make sure that in Converse that my, that I will be represented just as well as somebody that's wealthy or, you know, that's maybe more prominent than Katrina people, I guess. I understand where you're coming from, so I made that comment, yes I did. Because um, I do know that we got a lot of uh, people that came from New Orleans and all. And that's when our, our crime rate started. I'm not blaming people for Katrina. I was very poor once in my life too, sir. And I don't have a lot of money. And that's why I know that I could be a good mayor because I've been there. I know where it's at. But if you don't control things, it's going to get out of hand. And that's what we need to do as citizens of our great little community is all stand up and make this a city. I hear all the time people telling me when I'm walking to think, I'm, I'm living here. The crime is unreal. You know, and, and people call me and I go at 8 o'clock at night and I'm looking at people's houses that's been shot up. Trees have been shot up. You know, I know what's going on here. I know people don't feel safe. But that's what I say. It begins with your council. Council has to reach out to you, the taxpayers, or you that's coming, the people that are coming here, and make this city safe to get. This was a very nice, safe little city in 1996 when I came here. Very nice, and that's why I came here. And I do know, and I'm not going to lie to you, I do know it's going out of hand. Our, our, our safety, our communication, especially crime, is on the rise. And I know we can't stop it, but we as all people together, work together, and try to make it safer. You're not gonna eliminate crime. Crime's everywhere. But if you get together, and you stand up together, and make this, form a, 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 a committee with people in other Subdivisions in Astoria, uh, Mayor Marl, and everybody form a committee and stand up because 
People, this is your city. Stand up and be involved in it. This is your city. You can sit here and tell me that you're scared, but if you do not stand up and you do not go vote, it is not going to change because it's community involvement and council involvement. I thank you, sir. I hope that answered your question. Regardless of your economic background, I believe in Converse and the people that live here are very, very dear to me. I wouldn't be standing up here wanting to be your mayor if I didn't really want to be. I care about this community. I care about my son. Um, I care about his future. I care about our country. And I love it. And I want to make a difference so that we can move our, our country and our communities uh, forward. So I just want to say thank you again for coming. Uh, your point is made uh, relevant. We all have a part to play. And I just want to say thanks for coming out. Can y'all hear me? Okay, so full disclosure, that's my wife. Okay? I'm not gonna, <laughs> let's get clear about it. But my wife also knows that she married someone with uh, his own mind and can speak it very clearly. One of the things that I did not like and I disliked greatly when my wife was a city employee, the very first year that she was the EC director, I wanted to put a political sign out in my front yard, because it's my right to speak. And she dutifully told me that I could not. And I said, why? That's, the, that's how angry I was. I said, why? And she's like, because you're gonna get me fired. And I looked at her and I was like, I, I'm confused. You spoke words that don't make sense to me. And she essentially said, city employees cannot participate in the political process. And I said, sure, but I'm not endorsing anyone for city council. Uh, it's a national election, it just doesn't matter. Short and long of it is, even though I am a private citizen and I have the right to speak because I was her spouse, still am, I couldn't do anything about it either because it could be visited upon her and she would get in trouble at work. And as I understand, it's still the case today. I would like to know your thoughts on that particular subject and why is it that the city doesn't tell, uh, tell employees that they can speak their minds on their own time, after hours, because they're private citizens when they walk out that door. I did not like it, and I still do not like it. I think it is very inappropriate. of me and, and, and Converse. We love this community. We wouldn't be here if we didn't. Um, he passionately told me to run for council. It's his fault. And <laughs> he passionately told me to run for mayor. It's his fault. Uh, but I don't want to blame anyone. The charter is written in such a way that city employees cannot advocate or endorse a local elected official. They just can't. Um, it would seem to me, uh, you know, consistent with the Constitution, uh, that that should be changed, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Uh, not because I'm up here, not because I'm a former city employee, but just because it's, it's our right as citizens of this great country to endorse whomever we choose. Um, so it breaks my heart, really, for, you know, what it's worth. Uh, Emilio, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, to to you know not be able to endorse um, having having been a city employee for many years to be able to endorse a local elected official uh, simply because I would lose my livelihood. So I think it's a shame. I really do. I know you know that. Mr. Silver, so you want me to comment on that too? You're all comfortable. Okay. You and I 
well know that we live in this great country called the United States of America. We don't, unfortunately, get to do the laws. The laws we get are governed in Washington. They make our laws, and there goes that trickling effect. Your laws come back down. Unfortunately, they can't, employees can't be biased, and they can't to say, I'm going to support this, because if we don't follow the law, who's going to follow it? We're an example here. We sitting up here, myself and Councilwoman Silvis and Councilwoman Sean Russell. Oh, I, 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 I got, I got, a, I got, a, okay. But, and, and we, as, as council, have to know the law and make sure we don't step over the law because it begins with us. If we don't follow our law, how can I ask a citizen to follow the law? We are a prime example up there. We show the citizens, if we break the law and I can do what I want, well, you know what? They're gonna break the law and do what they want. Say, uh-uh, 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 you broke the law. What's good for you can be good for me. Everybody has to follow the law. Unfortunately, sir, that is how it is in our charter, and that is how our charter trickles down to our ordinance, and it's in our ordinance. These laws were written long before I came here, long before you came here. And we have to follow the law because we are an example up here. And unfortunately, it's, it sometimes it doesn't help, but we have to go by the law. Because we would go back into the Western time. Let's get my gun and shoot you. I don't like you. You're gone. I don't have to worry. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get me. But you can't live that way. It's not back then. We are 2019. We have come a long way. And unfortunately, crime is rapid in our USA. You know, lots of things are what do you call it, uh, where they get these children and these, and these women? Trafficking, trafficking. So the law, we have to go by the law because if we don't follow it, there ain't nobody else going to. That's what it all trickles down to. And I'm, like I said, unfortunately, we have to set a law and we have to live by the law. But we as the citizens can still stand up because You've got, number one, the Constitution, the freedom to speak. One, we have another question here. I didn't forget about you. I'm, I'm yeah. coming, okay? <laughs> I want to give people who haven't asked a chance. I'm Larry Everman. A lot of y'all know me. I'm the president of the Northampton. Hey, Joey, I know you mentioned Northampton. Uh, we've been, you know, with Converse now almost two years, and that was the best thing. So I know you were against annexation, but... That's not my question, no. Um, it's probably more of a comment. I really think some of the ordinances that are on the book needs to be looked at, too. And I'll give you two examples. Um, being with the HOA in Northampton, and even if I wasn't, I would be concerned about this. I'm also a recent graduate of the Converse Citizens Police Academy, so I did a ride-along with one of our officers. Several times during the ride along, I saw people on the phone and I asked him, why are we letting him get by or her get by? He says, we have been told not to enforce that. So I don't know. And I said, who told you this? I don't know if he didn't want to elaborate. He just said that, you know, I, I don't honestly know. The other one I see, and it's a big time thing in Northampton. We have six residents in Northampton that I guess drive cabs well, on weekends, they park them in the driveway. I mean, common sense was to say, you know, just the sheer weight of that is going to cave that driveway in. You know, we're also getting our streets redone, and we don't want the streets torn up either. I've spoken with Odie Martinez, you know, on a couple of occasions, and she said that they, they can, uh, I'm sorry, if they're in the road, that's against the law. 
but they're allowed to park in the driveway. That doesn't make any sense either. So those are two ordinances I think needs to be looked at. I'm sure there's other ordinances.